Good morning, my dear students. Welcome to our Sword Journal class. Hope you are very happy and hope you are studying every day's portion. Okay, dear students, in the last class uh, we studied about the uh, structure of elementary canal. Okay, in the last class we completed all the organs of our elementary canal. Okay, from mouth to anus. Okay, mouth, buccal cavity, tongue, teeth, pharynx, esophagus, small intestine. Uh, so, for the stomach, small intestine, large intestine, anus. Okay, so these are the organs of our alimentary canal. So, we have completed all these organs in the last class. Dear students, in this class, today's class, we are going to study about two more important topics, and these topics are also very important for two more questions and three, two more questions, three more questions, and one more questions. Many one more questions also there. Okay, okay, dear students, our first topic is histology of gut. Histology of gut. See, already I told you our alimentary canal is made up of many organs. Okay, from the esophagus to rectum. Rectum is the last part of the uh, large intestine. Okay, so from the esophagus to rectum, the wall of the alimentary canal is made up of three, sorry, four important layers. Okay, so the wall of the esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine. Okay, so these organs wall is made up of four important layers. Okay, so now we are going to study about all the layers of the wall of the alimentary canal. Okay, listen very carefully, dear students. This is one of the very important three mark question. Okay, see the cross section of these organs. Okay, so just imagine the esophagus. So when we take a cross section of this esophagus, we can see four important layers. Okay, similarly in the stomach, the small intestine, large intestine, every organs, the cross sections consist of you can see three sorry four important organs. The first sorry four important layer. The first layer is called serous. First layer is called serous. So the outermost layer of the alimentary canal is made up of a layer. This layer is called serosa layer. Okay, and this serosa layer is made up of squamous epithelium and large amount of connective tissues. So the squamous sorry uh, serosa layer is made up of squamous epithelium and connective tissues. Okay, then next to serosa, the inner layer is called muscularis. Okay. This muscularis layer is made up of smooth muscles, smooth, smooth circular muscles and also longitudinal muscles. So smooth circular muscles and longitudinal muscles are present in the muscularis layer. Okay. And this layer also consists of network of nerve cells. Okay. Network of nerve cells and parasympathetic nerves also connected with this muscularis layer. Here this parasympathetic nerve controlling the peristalsis. Peristalsis meaning when the foot is moving from the from one part of the alimentary canal to the next part, a wave-like structure is there. Okay, a wave there, wave-like appearance is giving. So this appearance is called peristalsis movement. This movement is called peristalsis movement. So the parasympathetic nerve connected with the muscularis layer controlling the peristalsis movement of the foot. Okay, dear students. Then next to this muscularis, one more layer is there. That layer is called submucosa layer. This submucosa layer is made up of loose connective tissues, and this layer consists of more amount of nerve cells, blood vessels, and also lymph vessels. Okay. So the third layer is the submucosa layer. This layer is made up of connective tissues and more amount of nerve cells and blood vessels and lymph vessels are present in this layer. And the last layer is called a mucosa layer. The inner layer of the alimentary canal is called a mucosa layer and this layer secreting the mucus. Okay, so this layer secreting a fluid. This fluid name is called mucus. Okay, dear students. So hope you are understood this histology of cut. So the wall of the, once again repeat, the wall of the alimentary canal is made up of four important layers. The outer layer is called the serosa layer. Then the next layer is called the muscularis layer. And the next layer is called the submucosa. And the inner layer is called the mucus layer, mucosa layer. Understand that you? Understand? So hope you are understood these three more questions. Then next we are going to study about digestive glands. Our entire digestive system, the wall of the entire digestive system has many glands. 
okay many glands and cells are present and they are secreting a biological catalytes that means a chemical like substance is secreted by this glands the name of this chemical like substance is called enzymes okay so the digestive glands present in our digestive system secreting a biological catalytes or a chemical like substance name of this substance is called enzyme name of this substance is called enzymes Understand a few? So, dear students, first you are going to study about the first digestive gland, the salivary gland. Okay. So, salivary gland is located inside the buccal cavity or inside the mouth. Okay. Our salivary gland is located inside the mouth. There are three pairs of salivary glands are present inside our mouth. Okay. So, there are this is one more question. There are three pairs of salivary glands are present inside our mouth. So, the first salivary gland name is called a parotid gland. First salivary gland name is called a parotid gland, and this gland is the largest gland among the three salivary glands. Okay, so already told it when there are three pairs of salivary glands are there. The first gland is called a parotid gland, it is the largest gland, and this gland is located in the cheek region. Okay, and next gland is called a submaxillary gland. Okay, submaxillary gland, and this submaxillary gland is present in the lower jaw. And the third gland is called a subcutaneous gland, and this subcutaneous gland is present below the tongue. Okay, dear students. So there are three pairs of salivary gland is there. The first gland is called a parotid gland, which is the largest gland. Largest salivary gland it is present in the cheek region. Then second gland is called a submaxillary gland, and this submaxillary gland is present in the lower jaw. And next gland is called a subcutaneous. This subcutaneous salivary gland is present in the below the tongue region. Hope you are understood these points. Then, next point about the salivary gland is there are three ducts. Duct means tube like structures. Okay. There are three ducts are arising from these three salivary glands. And finally, it is opening inside the mouth. Okay. So, each and every salivary gland is opened with a small duct or so tube like structure. And this tube like structure is finally opened inside the mouth. Okay. This is very carefully. Stenosis duct. Okay, stenosis duct or tube. This tube is arising from the parotid gland and it is finally opened in the mouth region inside the mouth. Okay, then next tube or duct is called quarters duct. Okay, this quarters duct is arising from the submaxillary salivary gland and finally opened in the mouth. Then the next last duct is called quarters duct. Okay, quarters duct. This duct is arising from the sublingual salivary gland and open, finally open in the mouth. Understand, my dear friends? So now we studied about the three important ducts of the salivary gland. So in parotid gland is associated with a the parotid gland is associated with a duct is called stenosyntactic. Then submaxillary uh, salivary gland is connected with a duct it is called water duct. Then sublingual salivary gland also connected with a duct this duct is called a parotid duct. Okay. So the salivary juice secreted by this parotid gland. He is passing through the stenosin duct and finally released in the mouth. Like that, the salivary juice secreted by the submaxillary salivary gland is passing through the quarters duct and finally it is released in the mouth. The next is sublingual. Okay, the, the, the salivary juice secreted by this sublingual salivary gland is passing through the sparkling tube and finally it is released in the mouth. The same difference. So many one more questions also here. Three pairs of salivary gland, their locations, and the duct or tubes arising from these salivary glands. Understand? So hope you all understood the salivary glands. Then next we are going to study about the next gland, gastric glands. Okay, the next gland is called gastric gland. See, the gastric gland is located in the wall of the stomach. Okay, so the inner wall of the stomach is lined with this special type of gland. That gland name is called gas gland. Okay, that gland is called gastric gland. Then, so the location of this gastric gland is wall of the stomach. The first point of that. Then, this gastric gland consists of three types of cells. Okay, there are three types of cells are present in the gastric gland. The first cell is called the peptic cells. This peptic cells secreting enzyme. Then the second cell is called both cells. This cell secreting mucus. 
and the last cell is called oxidic cells. This oxidic cells secreting hydrochloric acid. Okay. Okay, dear students. So now we completed two points about the salivary, sorry, gastric tract. First, we studied about the location dislocated in the wall of the stomach. Then we studied about the three cells and their secretions of the but type gastric tract. Okay, the first cell is called the peptic cells. This peptic cell secreting enzyme. Then goblet cell, this cell secreting mucus, and oxidic cell, this cell secreting hydrochloric acid. Okay. Then one more important factor also present in this gastric tract. Name of that factor is called gastric intrinsic factor. Gastric intrinsic factor. This gastric intrinsic factor responsible for the absorption of vitamin B12. Okay, vitamin B12 is highly absorbed inside the stomach. Okay, so this factor, this gastric intrinsic factor, only responsible for the absorption of vitamin B12 inside the stomach. Okay, dear students. So here also main one more questions are there. For example, the gas cells secreting hydrochloric acid inside the stomach. The which cells are secreting hydrochloric acid? The answer is oxidic cells. Like that, many one more questions also there. Okay, so hope you are understood this gastric tract also. Then next gland is the liver. Next one is the liver. Liver is the largest gland present in our alimentary canal. Okay, it's a very largest gland. Okay, and it is located in the upper right side of the abdominal cavity. Okay, the upper left side of the abdominal cavity, stomach is there. Then the upper right side of the abdominal cavity is occupied by this liver okay and this liver <coughs> liver is connected with the diaphragm liver is connected with the diaphragm then one of the important character of this liver is the regeneration okay so if any cells or tissues damaged inside the liver it can be replaced within three to four weeks Okay, so liver have high regeneration capacity, it can regenerate their cells within 3 to 4 weeks. Present of you, then. Next point, the liver is divided into 4 lobes. Two lobes are called major lobes, right and left major lobes, and two minor lobes, right and left minor lobes. So there are four lobes are present in the liver, two major lobes and two minor lobes. And all these four lobes are again divided into many small lobules. All these four lobes are again divided into many small lobules. Okay. Then next point. The lobes are connected with a small membrane. Name of that membrane is called Gilson's capsule. Name of this membrane is called a Gilson capsule. So there are four major lobes are there. Sorry, four lobes are there. Two lobes are major lobe, two lobes are minor lobe. Then all the four lobes are again divided into many small lobules, and each and every lobules are covered by a small membrane. Name of that membrane is called Gilson's capsule. The side of you, then the liver secreting a fluid. Okay, name of that fluid is called bile. Okay, name of this fluid is called it bile. Then this bile is stored inside here under one structure, under one organ, name of that organ is called gallbladder. So bile is secreted by the liver, but it is stored inside the gallbladder. So you all understood all this point. Then next is the recap see the depth of the tube arising from the liver is joined with the duct arising from the gallbladder. Okay, so the liver duct and the gallbladder duct both are joining togetherly and forming a common bile duct. Forming a common bile duct. Okay, then this bile duct, the common bile duct, is joined with the pancreatic duct. Duct coming from the pancreas. Okay, so the common bile duct is connected or joined with the pancreatic duct and forming hepatopancreatic duct. Hepatopancreatic duct. Understand a few? Understand? So I repeat these points once again. So the liver secreting bile, but the bile is secreted are stored inside the gallbladder and the liver duct and the gallbladder duct both are togetherly joining and forming a common bile duct. This common bile duct is joined with the duct of pancreas and forming hepatopancreatic duct. Understand a few? This hepatopancreatic duct opens inside the duodenum. 
open set the diode the so here diode name is a u shaped part of the small intestine first u shaped part of the small intestine is called diode name so this is part of pancreatic that is open inside the diode name asana few so dear students now one very very important one more question i am going to say see in between the hepato pancreatic duct and duodenum so hepato pancreatic duct is open inside the duodenum so in this place a spinster muscle is present name of the spinster is called spinster of od spinster of od so dear friends in alimentary canal there are four types of spinster muscles are there already i have we have completed the first three spinster muscles okay now the last spinster muscle is called spinster of od it is located between the hepato pancreatic duct and duodenum understand of you understand so hope you all understood all the points about the liver so here many one more questions are there example which organs having high regeneration capacity the answer is liver okay then which is the largest gland in our digestive system uh, liver okay then next the um, liver is the lobules of the liver is covered with the dash membrane okay it is a capsule like that many one more questions also here in this liver understand then the functions of this liver now we are going to study about the functions of liver liver performing many important functions in our body okay in our digestive system okay the first major function is this liver only destroy the aged blood cells okay after reaching the age the uh, blood cells are be said to be blood cells are automatically destroyed so it is destroyed inside the liver so this is the major function of the liver then the second major function of the liver is store the glucose in the form of glycogen okay to store the glucose in the form of glycogen and it also release the glucose into the blood stream okay release the glucose inside the blood stream so this is the second function of the liver then the third function this liver store the fat soluble vitamins and minerals store fat soluble vitamins and minerals and the fourth function this liver only detoxify the toxic substances okay suppose if some uh, any or any uh, toxic materials or the poisonous substances enter inside the body the liver only neutralize or reduce the toxic effect of that substance okay and the last function of the liver is liver only producing some essential amino acid and urea no sir if you so once again repeat the functions of the liver is one of the very important two more questions so once again repeat all the functions the first function is destroying the aged blood cells second one is storing the glucose in the form of glycogen and releasing the glucose in the blood blood okay then the next one is it detoxify the toxic substances okay store the fat soluble vitamins and minerals and the last one is this liver only is responsible for synthesizing of some essential amino acid and urea the cerebrum so these are the functions of liver so now we have completed the next organ liver okay hope you are understood all these points about liver okay then the last gland of our digestive system is pancreas okay the last gland is called pancreas as the second largest gland of our body second largest gland and the color of this gland is yellow color okay then location it is located between the two arms of u shaped duodenum already told you duodenum is a u shaped organ and it is the first or first parts of the small intestine so in between so just imagine sir u shaped means u shaped means okay between these two arms the pancreas is located so the location of this uh, pancreas is in between the duodenum okay then next point the pancreas acts as both exocrine gland and endocrine gland pancreas acts as both exocrine gland and endocrine gland here the exocrine portion of the pancreas secreting pancreatic juice the exocrine portion of the pancreas secreting pancreatic juice and this pancreatic juice consists of many enzymes the enzymes of pancreatic amylase trypsin and pancreatic lipase okay pancreatic amylase trypsin and pancreatic lipase these are the three enzymes present in the pancreatic juice secreted by the exocrine portion of the pancreas understand of you then 
the endocrine portion. Okay, I already told you the pancreas is acting as both the exocrine and the endocrine pan. So the endocrine portion of the pancreas is called islets of Langer Hobbs. The endocrine portion of the pancreas is called islets of Langer Hobbs. So one more question. Understand? Then this islets of Langer Hobbs secreting two important hormones. One hormone is called insulin and the second hormone is called glucagon. The islets of Langer Hobbs is made up of two types of cells, alpha cells and beta cells. Here alpha cells secreting glucagon and beta cells secreting the hormone insulin. So, once again, repeat all the points about this pancreas. Pancreas is the second largest endocrine gland, and the color of this gland is yellow color and it is located in between the duodenum. Then it is acting as both the exocrine gland and the endocrine gland. The exocrine portion of the pancreas secreting pancreatic juice. This pancreatic juice consists of three types of enzyme pancreatic amylase, trypsin, pancreatic lipase. Then the endocrine portion of the pancreas is called islets of Langer Hobbs. This islets of Langer Hobbs has two types of cells, alpha cells and beta cells. Here, alpha cells secreting glucagon and beta cells secreting insulin. Now we have completed the digestive class. First, we studied about the salivary gland, then we studied about gastric gland, then we studied about the liver, and finally we studied about the pancreas. Understand? So all these plans are separately may be asked for two mark or three mark question. Understand? And maybe one mark question. So already I told you some example for some one mark questions. Okay, my dear students. Okay, dear students. Hope you all enjoyed today's class. So try to complete these question answers today. Okay. So we will meet in the next class. Thank you.